What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. And there is just something about the Underdog. But I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we have an absolute beast on the Underdog Talk. But before we get into this interview, you know I have to give this man a proper Underdog Talk introduction. Hailing from Petersburg, Indiana, <laughs> today's guest is a professional bodybuilder and the defending 2021 Mr. Olympia 212 champion, a man who once said, when you see the work paying off, you begin to work even harder. This gentleman is currently coached by Hanny Rambod, a.k.a. the pro creator. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud and honored to present the big fella, the one and only Mr. Derek Lunford. What hey. are you, How you doing today, man? How you doing, man? I appreciate it. that. Was a, that was an awesome introduction, man. Got me all hyped up. <laughs> I love it. I mean, speaking of hype up, you like two hours posted a video of you know doing a quad stomp, and I, I have to ask first, have you ever measured your legs? And I mean, I really had no clue that humans' legs could even get that big, Derek. Like, yeah. I mean, what the hell? What? No, I, I oh. it's, it's, I'm probably one of the only bodybuilders that doesn't really measure my my body parts. Like, I've measured my arms a couple times and my <sighs> my back because I got fitted for a suit the other day. Uh, but like quads, calves, like just everything else, not, not really, man, to be honest. But yeah, that was, um, that was actually yesterday that, uh, post-workout we had a, we had a good leg day and we were feeling good. And I thought, what the heck, let's just, let's just throw it up there. You know, and I, I like that not measuring because, you know, sky's the limit. There is no measurement of success. And I mean, you will just keep on growing, but you know, I'm not here to just talk about your legs. I'm here to talk about the bodybuilder himself. And in fact, I want to take it way back, Derek. You know, you were a very active child, obviously, from the moment, you know, you really started playing sports. You, you liked exercise, you liked soccer, and really wrestling was where you kind of shone at an early age. But obviously, you know, the school that you attended, uh, you talk about how it did not have wrestling. And, and that's kind of a blessing in disguise as, you know, that's where you really found bodybuilding because, you know, you were looking for a sport, looking for that activity, Derek. So first, why bodybuilding? And then do you remember the first time, you know, you truly became interested in bodybuilding? Yeah, definitely, dude. You just brought me back to when it all started, man. You're right, dude. Like, I've always been into sports, love sports my entire life. I worked so hard at it from, like, such a young age, like kindergarten, preschool, all the way up through high school, very, very dedicated athlete in many different sports. I've done everything from soccer to wrestling to basketball to baseball to golf to so many things. I've tried a lot. So, uh, yeah, very active uh, in sports growing up. Once I got into high school, it was mostly just like two sports, soccer and wrestling. Soccer, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was a team sport. I really thrived in, in soccer. Um, but, but where my heart and soul was, was wrestling. That is where uh, I just, I took it super, super serious. And 24-7, 365, I was a wrestler. I was, you know, before school started in high school, I would get there an hour, hour and a half early. I would either run or I would get with the swimming coach and the swimming coach would put me through some drills for conditioning. So I would condition in the morning and then I would take a shower. Everybody would get to school. We'd go to our first couple classes. I had a weightlifting class, which was uh, my high school strength trainer and my wrestling coach. So I got to, to train like weights during the, during the day at school. And then after school, I would go to practice and I would either go to soccer or wrestling practice, which typically would be wrestling because uh, for me, soccer was like kind of like a seasonal thing. Wrestling was a year round thing. And then, uh, even on occasion, I would I would take time after wrestling practice and go to a buddy's house and where he had wrestling mats. We would drill more techniques. So it was all around the clock wrestling. And then whenever I wasn't competing in the season, I like off season, I would be going to tournaments or camps all around the country to to be with the best because I wanted to be the best myself. And to fast track you now, uh, I I did go to college for a short period of time to wrestle, and then I realized like just something during that time made me realize like wrestling is not going to be my future. I just had this lingering in the back of my head, like 
even though you put so much into wrestling and you love it and and I wasn't bad at it I just knew there wasn't going to be like a future for me in it and I that really tore me apart and when I transferred schools I didn't know what to do I felt like I was like losing myself I like I I lost my identity because my identity was completely in wrestling like Derek the wrestler that's how I viewed myself and everybody kind of knew me as Derek the wrestler so um when I didn't have that in my life anymore and I wasn't competing it just like like i felt like i was going crazy i didn't want to be the typical college party kid and and honestly on the, on the flip side of that yes i i did go to school and i did get my business degree but it wasn't something i was like super passionate about either like like school just like i, I never really liked it that much even though i did fair in it you know i did good and and so i was just like trying to find my way in college man and the only thing that stayed consistent that I truly loved was being in the gym. I just loved being in the gym. I loved, you know, trying to get stronger, building more muscle, that pump that you get in the gym. And even something as simple as just meeting up with your buddies in the gym, like it got me excited. It's something I look forward to every day to meet up with your buddies in the gym and, and, and work hard to get better that day. And so now that leads me to when did I start bodybuilding in – I think it was, I think it was April of 2014. I was in my car and it was leg day that day. I had really no reason to go train legs hard. You know, all I really want to do is just like have the chiseled abs. And to be honest, I wasn't even thinking bodybuilding. I was thinking more like model look, like a men's physique kind of look. And so what did I do? I got on my phone. I just typed in bodybuilding motivation on YouTube. First one that, that came up, I just clicked on it and I'm sitting there watching and I'm just like, just like less than a minute in, I'm hyped up, man. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. So cool. I seen guys like Flex Lewis, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, all the top guys at the time. And I was just getting amped up and amped up. And I remember after that video ended, I put my phone down and I looked at myself in the rear view mirror and I said it twice and I was like, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. And then I said it again to reassure myself, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. So the way I was at the time, I said, okay, I'm going to go in. I'm going to tell everybody here at the gym that I'm going to be a bodybuilder. It's kind of silly. But um, when I walked in, I told all my buddies, the guys I trained with all the time at the gym, I said, you know, went up and told them, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. This, I'm going to be a professional. If I'm not a professional bodybuilder and IBB pro, I'm at least going to look like one, you know, and just, I said, just give me three to five years. And I'm going to, I'll tell you this right now, you're not even going to recognize me. And dude, I'm like 145 pounds. Wow. I, I wrestled 141 in college and I was supposed to wrestle 133. So if that tells you what I look like probably at the time. And so, you know, the guys were like, okay, you know, best of luck to you, pal. And, uh, I weren't say I was I wouldn't say they they weren't um, discouraging or anything like that. It just was like, all right, if you want to do it, go do it. And that's crazy because uh, let's see, three years later is whenever I turned pro as Mister USA wow. and uh, won my pro debut. I went to the Olympia and placed top five in the two twelve Mister Olympia. So three to five year plan was what I had, and and even if it took me longer, I was willing to stick it out. And I mean, it's yeah. it's Derek the bodybuilder now, not Derek the wrestler. And I mean, to be honest, it, it was actually a year after that kind of that that thought, because obviously, you know, you take the stage at the 2015 NPC Indianapolis Champions uh, Championship yeah. in the men's open welterweight division, which you know you won. So I mean, you started your bodybuilding career off with a bang, and then honestly, after that, you wasted no time making your professional bodybuilding debut just a month after your, you earned your pro card, you know, you competed at the 2017 IFBB Tampa Pro. I mean, you managed to completely demolish the competition, Derek. Let's just say it how it is. I mean, what was that feeling, you know, of hearing your name as an IFBB pro? What, what was that all like after, you know, that journey, that, that blood, sweat, and tears that went into getting there? Well, I remember in 2016 when I placed second in the middleweight at, at the USA's, I was so bummed, man. I had done two shows previous that year and won both overalls, junior NPC Junior Nationals being one of them. And I was so certain that I was going to get that 
you know, I had BB Pro card in 2016. And when I came in second and just just shy of getting that pro card, it just like, oh man, that was so, I don't want to use the word devastating because <laughs> things could be so much worse. But I'm like, man, I, I, I thought I had it. So from that time to 2017, I'm like, every day counts. I'm giving everything to this. I am not going to do another show until I come back and win this one. I want to be Mr. USA. And that's what I did. I, I just gave everything I had each day for 365 days, came back uh, a weight class heavier as, as a light heavy and, and won the overall title as Mr. USA. And uh, that's when I knew kind of a few weeks leading up to the USAs that, okay, if, if, if things go well at USAs, the Tampa pros the next weekend and I could maybe do the 212 and just throw my name in the hat and see, you know, see where, where we land. And, uh, something told me a few weeks out, just like something in the back of my mind told me a few weeks out from USAs. I looked at my buddy and I said that I was training with, and I said, I think I'm prepping for the Olympia. And I only told him that because if I, if I said that to other people, they would be like, you're crazy or oh, you're full of yourself or something. But I just said it to him. It was after a leg day. I said, Something tells me I'm prepping for the Olympia this year. I feel it. He goes, I think so too, man. You look crazy. So again, that, that's what happened in 2017. And how did it feel, man? Oh, wow. That was, at that time, one of the great, greatest moments of my life. Like, I didn't even have a whole lot of time to process becoming a pro bodybuilder and being Mr. USA because six days later was the Tampa Pro. And then I'm on to the onto the Olympia. So it's like a dream come true all in like a week. It was crazy. So yeah, man, that was for anybody out there that's competing in the NPC and wants to take it to the next level. The USA championships in Las Vegas is one of the best shows and best titles to have. So I encourage you all, if you're, if you want to become a pro becoming Mr. USA is a, uh, is a huge honor. So I would, I would highly recommend that show. And, you know, to me, the one thing I've learned as I do in this podcast, don't ever let anyone tell you what you know you can't be. You know, even if it's the craziest idea of starting a podcast and talking to the best bodybuilders in the world and best athletes in the world, you know, do what you want to do. And obviously you did what you wanted to do as in 2021. I mean, you won 212, Mr. Olympia. You were not a Mr. America anymore or Mr. USA. You were the Mr. Olympia. I mean, what was the training, you know, that went into this monumental win? What was that training that went into this, sir? Well, it wasn't just one year of training or one prep of training. This was years and years. Like I said, like I was training my entire life for other sports. So transitioning from wrestler in high school and college to learning how to train like a bodybuilder that's taken me several years to to learn and develop my way of training and i wouldn't say it's just my way of training you know i have my coach honey rambot and i've trained with so many people uh before i even met him as well that that have taught me a lot but now that i'm doing more of the fst7 style training it actually takes me back to when I first started bodybuilding. You asked me like how it was when I first started. I would watch the Phil Heath and Jay Cutler videos. Those are guys that I really looked up to a lot. And I didn't really think too much about it. I would just mimic their workouts. If I had like a question like, oh, I want to hit chest uh, today, then I would type in, you know, again, my phone, YouTube, boom, uh, Jay Cutler chest workout. And I would, you know, I'd, I'd watch it and I would go do it in the gym myself right after I watched it. Um, which is why I put out a lot of co content too. That's so I can, you know, hopefully encourage, motivate and inspire people and to, to do it. But, but yeah, what I, what I realized was seeing that training and the way I was training in the first couple of years when I made such insane progress was the FST seven style training or very similar to it. And now it's clicking. It's like, oh, Hani was coaching these guys and, you know, I'm sure giving them training programs like he does for me. And so now that I'm kind of transitioning back into or, or have transitioned back the last couple of years to the FST7 style training uh, where uh, high intensity meets volume meets heavy weights. I love that. Um, I'm seeing a lot of progress, man, especially from last year to this year. And I mean, it seems like Derek Lunsford, the 2021 212 Olympia winner, not seems like it is 
you are not defending your title anymore, as obviously on September 15th, 2022, Mr. Olympia LLC announced on Instagram that you, sir, received a special invite to compete for the Mr. Olympia title. I mean, my two questions for you. What is really the difference between the 212 and open, obviously, besides that that weight? What is different between these two you know, bodybuilding classes? There really is nothing different, I would say, uh, in the two divisions other than the weight, right? So the judging criteria is exactly the same. Open and 212 have the same judging criteria. Um, other than that, really the 212, it would be very difficult for a taller guy to do well. So if you're 5'9", 5'10", it's going to be a lot harder for you to to do well in the 212. I'm not saying you can't because there's definitely some great 212ers that are that are taller, but you're seeing guys, you know, like Sean Clarita. I'm not sure exactly how tall he is. Let's say like five foot. I I, I don't know. I know like uh, Jose Raymond, a guy I used to look up to who competed when I first came on the scene was uh, I think five two or five three. So and and you got to think those guys are. St- Stacked, man, and uh, I, and then you guys got guys like Flex Lewis who, and myself who are about five five foot six, and I would say that five 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 six is the more the ideal height for the two twelve division to be able to fill out the frame and not be too tall but still have the the size. Um, whereas the open, anybody has has a shot, you know, a tall guy, a short. I mean, you saw Sean Clarita, the giant killer, taking out some tall guys, so. Really, it, 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 the 212 is just more or less like a weight class uh, similar to the open division. So I don't feel that I'm doing anything really any different uh, as far as like what I'm preparing for, as far as posing and, 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 and how I'm building this physique. I just want it to be bigger and better than it was in the 212. Yeah, thank you for answering that. Obviously, I was always wondering if there is something more than obviously – you know, that clear weight difference. And then, well, you know- well, let's say this too. The Sandow title is the open, the Sandow trophy that, that, that Mr. Olympia title is the open division in bodybuilding. So whether it's men's physique classic or two twelve, the Sandow is given to the open bodybuilding division champion and the title and crown of Mr. Olympia is the open bodybuilding division. And obviously, you know, the two twelve is 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 the two twelve a newer division? Obviously, um, it's, so it has been around for I forget how many years because it had the two the two o two for a couple of years. There was like two champions in the two o two. Then Flex Lewis won for seven years, and then uh, you had um, Kamal win, yeah. Sean win, and then myself. So it's it's relatively new, but classic the classic physique division is much newer than the 212 actually and obviously you know no knock on the 212 or the classic but you know the mr o open i mean there's just there's just nothing like it let's just say it how it is i mean and obviously there's great competitors in both i don't mean to say it like that but you know that's when you think of bodybuilding you think of just the legend sean and tennis everyone's battling it out in mr o you know and you're going in with a big advantage obviously you have arguably one of the best co- bodybuilding coaches of all time. Some consider him the best. What is it like, you know, having Hanny as a coach? And then kind of how did that happen? Well, I am thankful beyond belief, let me tell you. I'm, I'm very grateful to have him in my corner. Um, it, just coach athlete in general, there needs to be, like, good synergy between the two. And, and, and I, I don't think that uh, – Every coach is, is right for every athlete. I think that really needs to mesh well. So I don't know if Hani is right for everyone. And it, it maybe he is, maybe, maybe he isn't. But for me, it's perfect because I have super high standards for myself. He has the highest standards for himself and anybody that he works with. And so our main goal and main focus is to be our best. And we're giving 100% to one another. And I can handle a little bit more of uh, – coach coaching coachability i can be more coachable i guess you could say uh if 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 i need to kick in the butt that's okay like just tell me and and we'll do it like whatever you tell me like it's going to get done to the best of my ability and if you don't think it is then then and you have something to say 
go ahead, say it, and and then I'll make sure it gets done 100. percent So there's good communication back and forth. Uh, like I said, I have high standards for myself. So does he, and that's why we work so well together. But I just feel like sometimes, you know, some some people don't like that. Some people like to have um, coaches that are like a little easier, more laid back. Whereas he is like very detailed about everything. Like it's crazy how how specific we are about everything I do each and every day, you know, and how how often he calls me and checks in on me and makes sure that things are going on track. So that's awesome. Super thankful, super grateful to have him in my corner. And I think that's always what it it's been about being a hundred percent to, you know, yeah. your your mentor and you know, uh, Ryan Lackey was on and he was telling me about how just you know coaches are so important because 99% of the time they've made the mistakes that you might make and they've been where you are. And obviously he has been there. You know, he's really the goat maker. And obviously you are one of the future goats in our sport. And, you know, I just saw that now Seabum has the same coach, you know, and that's, I mean, that's got to mean something when two of the best have the same coach currently. I mean, that's <laughs> just a shout out to, you know, really everyone in that party. Now, you know, I kind of want to end this interview. You, you've you really seen it all in the sport of bodybuilding and the sport of fitness, you know, or the overall world of fitness as well. So what is your biggest tip for someone who is looking to become a bodybuilder just like you once were trying to become? And then also, what's your biggest tip for someone who is just looking to start their fitness journey like you once were? Yeah, this is sincerely the best advice I could give you because I would give it to myself, like my younger self. You have to love it. You just do. You have to want to be in the gym. You have to want to do everything that it takes and commit yourself to bodybuilding. Because if you don't, it's a 24-7, 365, you know, either you're moving forward or you're moving backwards kind of thing, right? There's no like, oh, I'm just going to maintain right now. It's no, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Like, like you, it, it's a constant thing. So if you're not able to, you know, consistently stick with it, then it's going to be very, very difficult for you to make the progress that you need to take your physique to the next level. And it makes it so much easier to want to do something and, and like to do it rather than going, okay, I need to, I need to get my phone and get motivated real quick. Like you just like have to have this burning desire inside of you to want to do it. And so when I'm getting under, like, like yesterday I was front squatting, I was doing 315, 365 front squats. And I was like, you got to want it come on, you got to want it. Like I say that all the time to myself on these sets that like sometimes scare me. It's a heavier set or I know it's going to be a really intense set that I'm like, man, I'm, I'm smoked right now. I have no energy and I really don't want to do this because this sucks and bodybuilding is not easy, but at the core of me, inside of me, I have this burning desire to continue to be better each and every day. And I want it, man. Like I am, I feel blessed and grateful that I get the opportunity to do this and I don't want to take it for granted. So if you're someone that, that wants to be in my position or, or an IBB pro Olympian, whatever, you have to continue to love it and always remember like how it felt when you started. And I know people have heard that all the time, but you have to, I do that for myself too. I continuously will look back at pictures, videos, or just or just like try to think about how it felt when I first started training. Sometimes I actually fly back to Indiana and I go train in the gyms that I first started at just so I remember like, Oh, that's what it was like when I was here. Like, like I put myself back into the shoes of my younger self and go, okay, like here's where I am today. Like would, would your younger self be proud of where you are today? Because like meaning am I doing my best? Am I grateful? Am I you know, giving hundred percent each day, like I, I said I would 10 years ago, you know, so I, I try to remember how it felt in the beginning so that I don't lose sight of that. I think it's important that you remember where you come from and go back there as much as you can, just to see how far you've came. So that's for me, the best advice I can give. There's been times where I, I, I was not motivated and I'm like, man, this is tough. Uh, there's so many other things in the world that you could be doing, but at the end of the day, I would not be myself. I love it way too much. And I just, I just have to keep moving forward. And, and it's going to be a God willing, a very long, good career. <laughs> I, I know it will because you for and, and one more thing too, I wanted to say this earlier when you, when you said something too, you were talking about vision, right? Like, like what you want to do, you got to do what you want to do. And I'm a firm believer that we're all given this, this dream or this vision or this calling that, 
like something is speaking to us, right? That's saying like, go for it. And I think a lot of us get scared. And and when sometimes when you share your ideas with someone else, like, I don't know how you were when you first started this podcast, but maybe you told somebody, uh, hey, I want to, I want to um, interview these athletes. And you're like, come on, Teddy, you're crazy, man. You know, but that's your vision. That's your vision. You can't allow somebody else's opinion on, on, on what they think or, or cause for them, a lot of times I think it's like, oh, I, I could never be a pro bodybuilder. So just take the easy road and go get a nine to five job. You know, like for me, it's like, no, like this is what I know in my heart that I should be doing. Same as you and same as I'm sure so many people out there watching is like, if you feel it inside of you and you just know it, go for it and just stay consistent, keep at it. The hardest thing is to follow through until you, you see it come to fruition. I mean, Derek, I listened to every, every word you said. My, I mean, that is, ladies and gentlemen, the mindset of a champion right there. And I mean, that is why you, sir, you asked earlier, God willing, will you be in the sport? No, you will, because you have the mindset of a champion. And I don't say that much, but I've been able to talk, you know, with some of the best to ever do it and step on our stage and just in general. And I mean, that is the mindset of the champion. How bad do you want it? Kai Green once said, you know, I'm going into the gym. I'm willing to die in the gym. If I'm going to die in the gym, so be it. <laughs> I mean, sometimes yeah. people are scared of that mentality, but yeah. that's just a beast mentality. I mean, you see the best of all time in all sports, Tom Brady. I mean, that dude is willing to, he's really, he's a, he, he, that mentality, Jordan, that mentality. I mean, there's nothing like it. And I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I am talking with the beast himself, Derek Lunsford. I mean, Derek, best of luck in this competition. You are going to absolutely just kill it, make everyone proud. You worked your ass off. Now, again, before we go, is there anything you want to plug? Where can we find, you know, your training? I know you do training. Where can, what are the codes we can use to support you? You know, what's the social media? The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Teddy. I appreciate it. You having me on, man. And uh, yeah, for sure. So I have my website, DerekLunsford.com. I got merch on there, a couple t-shirts uh, if you want to support. I just, I honestly just made them because I like them myself. They were super comfortable. So uh, we got those on at DerekLunsford.com. I do coaching. I have a team of coaches, me, my wife, and a friend who we, uh, it, that's uc-fit.com. There's links in my Instagram, which is uh, Derek Lunsford underscore. Um, same as my TikTok. We do a lot of stuff on TikTok too. We've been going live actually recently uh, in my training. So if you want to check out my Instagram and my TikTok and my YouTube channel, I'm putting out a ton of videos on my YouTube channel, uh, Derek Lunsford on YouTube. Um, we're trying to put out at least two videos a week and some extras along the way. But yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be sharing some exclusive content to my pages. As far as my sponsors and and uh, everyone supporting me, Eva Jr. Nutrition, Hani Rambod's uh, company, he created a supplement company for his athletes. So you know they're going to be the best. Yeah. And clearly they are. I've been using it for the last couple of years, and I don't ever want to switch ever. <laughs> they're the best products I've ever had, especially their pre-workout, the 3D. It's one of my favorites, but uh, you can check that out too, evisionnutrition.com. My code is Derek, D-E-R-E-K. Um, again, all these links and codes are on my Instagram. And uh, Gasp Better Bodies Clothing, my, my code there is Derek15. Uh, Icon Meals, if you are within the U.S. and want pre-made meals, you can go to iconmeals.com, and my code is Derek10. Uh, also competition tanning, we have pro tan. So my code there is, is also Derek as well. If you're looking for, uh, the best tanning in the, in the industry, pro tan is the one. And then shout out to Cynthia James, CJ's elite suits, who makes my posing trunks as well. So. I mean, just code Derek is the, is the truth and the answer. I mean, I personally, after this beginning, Derek was from shirt and first person to, uh, get a product or a tan using Derek's code, send me a screenshot. I'll send you an autograph from one of the legendary guests we've had, as well as a box full of goodies. Please make it happen. Also, if you guys get a shirt, I mean, send me a DM too, and I'll also include everything in that as well. I mean, rock the best. I, I got to get you one, Teddy. <laughs> hey, I will I'll message you after this, all right? I will wear it proudly, yeah. Jim. I will wear it on the podcast. I will do everything. Yeah. I will wear it all the time. Guys, gotcha. please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out Derek's content. All his stuff will be in the bio. I mean, one of the best to step on the stage. 
and it is just a young career. So I'm so excited to see where it goes. Guys, until next time, Underdog out.